Two weeks can be a long time, can't it? So, the Overwatch League is going to return this weekend, apparently, according to the Overwatch League. We all hope that this doesn't change in the near future, including me. Um, we, the Overwatch League is due to return this weekend, and it's been a little while since we've seen some proper action. So, it's time to go over what has happened so far in the Overwatch League's 2020 season, and get us right up to date with the present day. So, there were no expansion teams for the 2020 season of the Overwatch League, with the Overwatch League moving to a homestand format, where teams would play home and away for the first time in the league's history. But it was the ultimate goal for the Overwatch League since its creation, and we did see some test homestands last year to test out the idea of this, and it worked very well, and the crowds were fantastic. So this year, the league started in February, on February the 8th, and we started out in New York with Toronto Defiant taking on the Paris Eternal, which was a 3-1 win for Toronto. Uh, London Spitfire were also in action against New York. New York, the hosts, would come out on top with a 3-1 win. London Spitfire would be in action again against the Paris Eternal in the battle for Europe, but Paris Eternal would take a 3-0 win here. Boston Uprising would take on the New York Excelsior and lose 3-0, with Boston Uprising this season have been making their mark on the bottom of the league, let's put it that way. Also, this was held in du duality with a Dallas Fuel homestand, obviously in Dallas at the Esports Stadium Arlington, where we get to see the Pacific teams for the first time this season, where we saw Los Angeles Gladiators take the Vancouver Titans really close to the 3-2 win for the Titans. The Valiant get a win over the Dallas Fuel, when we expected the Valiant to be really poor, they actually looked stronger than expected, although they did lose to the Vancouver Titans in the next match 3-0, and the current Overwatch League champions, the San Francisco Shock, would be in action against the Dallas Fuel, and it would be a 3-1 win for the Shock. Fuel, they lose both of their games at their home stand, but that was basically the beginning of their worries for this season. Moving on then, and this is when things started to go downhill a little bit for the Overwatch League. Prior to the first week's fixtures, as I said, started in the first week of February, on the 29th of January, the Overwatch League made the extraordinary uh, decision to cancel home stands in China, for February and March because of the emerging coronavirus outbreak in China and Asia. And so these homestands were not going to go ahead and these homestands were planned for weeks two, three, four. So that meant we were going to see a restricted amount of games during the, during the season. And also this meant that we wouldn't see the Pacific teams in action again for quite a while. In week two, we witnessed a battle of brotherly love in Philadelphia, where we would see the Florida Mayhem, the Houston Outlaws, Washington Justice, and of course, Philadelphia. Florida would take on Houston with a 3-0 win for Florida. Washington Justice would take on Philadelphia and it would be a 3-1 win for Philadelphia. Washington Justice would take on Houston and it would be a 3-0 win for Washington. And Florida Mayhem would take on the Philadelphia Fusion with the Fusion coming out as 3-0 victors over the Mayhem. So, this week gave us an indication of what we were expecting from the New Look Florida Mayhem, the appalling Houston Outlaws to start off with, and the Philadelphia Fusion looking like an extremely powerful team even though it was just their own home stand. Of course, we missed out on the homestands we were meant to see in China, and this continued into week three as we moved to Washington for the Washington Justice homestand, and we saw a swathe of teams in action. This was in New York Excelsior. They took on the Philadelphia Fusion, with the Philadelphia Fusion getting a surprise 3-1 win over the Excelsior. Philadelphia Fusion really stamped their authority on being one of the top teams in the league this season. Boston Uprising would take on the Houston Outlaws, the match of the Papagas, two teams that were absolutely awful. But Boston Uprising do win the Battle of the, the Battle of the Papagas with a 3-2 victory. Houston Outlaws were still looking for their first win. Paris Eternal would take on the Washington Justice, with the Paris Eternal getting a 3-1 win, with Paris looking like they were improving as the season got into groove. New York Excelsior would take on the Houston Outlaws, but this would be a 3-0 win for the Excelsior, as you would expect. Toronto Defiant would take the Philadelphia Fusion very close, but a 3-2 win for the Fusion would maintain their unbeaten record. And the Spitfire would put up their first win of the season against the Washington Justice, consigning the Justice to a winless homestand. What London Spitfire performing the first and currently only reverse sweep of the season so far. In week four, we moved over to Houston, where we saw New York Excelsior taking on the Florida Mayhem. This would be a 3-0 win for Excelsior. Toronto Defiant took on the Atlanta Rain. They would look nowhere near as potent as they were, with the Rain in, the, in action for the first time this season, getting a 3-0 victory. London Spitfire would become known as the Kings of Map 5 as they get a 3-2 win over the Houston Outlaws. Houston Outlaws looking improved 
at their own homestand though. Boston Uprising will take on the Philadelphia Fusion and no surprise is that the appalling Boston Uprising lose 3-0 to the Philadelphia Fusion. Paris Eternal will take on Atlanta Reign and this is where things started to shift up. We were expecting Atlanta Reign to be a very good team this season but Paris Eternal get a 3-1 victory stamping their authority near the top of the league. London Spitfire again going to map 5 would beat the Florida Mayhem 3-2 and Toronto Defiant would then take on the Houston Outlaws, and the Houston Outlaws would finally get off the mark for their season with a 3-1 victory over the Toronto Defiant. Toronto Defiant massively going down in expectations in this week. In week 5, we were due to go back to Washington for their Washington Justice's second homestand of the season, but we were also due to go to the Seoul Dynasty homestand in Korea for the first time. But Seoul had their homestand cancelled along with the makeup games that were planned to catch up on the games that were missed in the Chinese homestands all set in Korea around this time. So all Asian games had actually been called off by this point, including the Seoul Dynasty homestand that was meant to be featured in week 5 and the makeup games that were meant to be featured in the weeks 6 and 7. So the league were lacking fixtures once again with only one homestand in week 5, the Washington Justice. By this point though we were already in March and this meant that we had the introduction of hero pools. Hero pools would ban two DPS, one tank and one support each week to change up the meta and make sure things didn't get stale. And this caused some very interesting results for the Washington Justice's homestand in week 5 which was the solo homestand for that week. Toronto Defiant would take on Florida Mayhem with a 3-1 win for the Florida Mayhem consigning Toronto Defiant to a massively poor run of form. Paris Eternal would take on the Houston Outlaws. This would be a 3-0 win for the Houston Outlaws. The Houston Outlaws looked much, much better in the dive-based meta that we saw become much more prevalent during this week. Boston Uprising would take on the Washington Justice and this would be a 3-1 win for the Washington Justice. The Washington Justice will get their first ever homestand win. Congratulations to them. Boston Uprising still look as poor as ever. Paris Eternal come into a game against the Philadelphia Fusion off the back of the poor loss to the Houston Outlaws but they pull off a surprising victory, consigning the Philadelphia Fusion to their first loss of the season, 3-2. New York Excelsior would take on the Washington Justice. Again, New York Excelsior would show their prowess, with them having too much for the Washington Justice and getting a 3-1 win. And the Boston Uprising would take on the Atlanta Reign. The Reign would be able to bounce back from their poor loss to the Paris Eternal in Week 4 and get a 3-0 win against the poor Boston Uprising to continue their season. And this is where things became unstuck for the Overwatch League. We were meant to go to Florida in week 6, but due to the increased spread of the coronavirus, all homestands were cancelled as of that point. This meant that there were no fixtures during week 6 when we were expecting to go to Florida and the league had to do something in order to try and keep the matches being played. The great thing about esports and gaming like this is the fact that they can move to an online format. The Overwatch League announced prior to week 7 that it would be doing exactly that. Much like the format from Overwatch Contenders that we have seen throughout the years. Along with this came a revised fixture schedule leading up to the middle of the season where we would review it and see if we could go back to homestands depending on what the coronavirus outbreak was doing and how it was controlled. In week 7 we were expecting to see the likes of Seoul Dynasty, the 2LA teams and San Francisco Shock face off in this first of the rescheduled online fixtures. Unfortunately, due to the lockdown that was announced prior to week 7 in California, this meant that there were issues with the Overwatch League and its broadcasting and therefore week 7 could no longer go ahead either. This meant that on the 20th of March, the Overwatch League would postpone the matches that were meant to, meant to take place during week 7. And that brings us to the present day. We are still currently trying to get the hero pool that we were drawn uh, ahead of week 6 used. And this will be used this week providing the matches go ahead which the Overwatch League is planning that the matches do go ahead in any case. So during this week we will see all of the teams back in action and I can't wait, I don't know about you. And there will be previews at the end of the week coming up for both the Atlantic and Pacific fixtures that we will see this weekend. All the fixtures are now being clumped into one big bundle with 16 fixtures for week 8, 20 fixtures then on up until the middle of the season. There is still an announcement to be made from the Overwatch League in regards to the rearrangement of the fixtures we were meant to be seeing in Week 7 from the San Francisco Shock, the LA Gladiators, the LA Valiant and the Seoul Dynasty and we will wait on that announcement and I will bring that to you as soon as possible. But that is the Overwatch League season so far. It's a bit messy, it's a bit all over the place and it's a very sad thing that we can't have the homestand format right now but as ever 
health and safety must come first, and we look forward to going back to the homestand format sometime in the future. But I'm going to leave it here for this one. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, give a like, subscribe if you're new, and I will see you in the next video. See you then.